Hello and welcome back to Tales of Berseria, the Let's Play Blind with Neo Rambler. Right then, since last video I have been grinding. So you can see now the levels of the characters are up only by about one to two levels um, because the experience points I was getting from the enemies in the uh, area that we're about to go back into, where we ended up last time, um, was pretty good. Um, and they are pretty tough enemies, but it took a long time and I just don't have a lot of time these days to do massive amounts of grinding. Plus, if I make it too easy for myself, it won't be as fun. Not that I haven't had fun playing this game, but I'm sure, you know, if I was a more expert JRPG player, I probably could have made it more entertaining by making it more challenging. But never mind, we put it on hard mode anyway, so, you know, we've had that to uh, to enjoy. And um, I'm really just playing this for the story, because the story is very interesting, um, and still has been. So yeah, um, so we won't... Should I fight a load of enemies now or not? I said I wasn't going to, it's just checking... I don't know what their experience is. Um, no, I'll, I'll fight a couple of enemies just to show you the enemy variations. We did at the end of the last video, but just as a bit of a reminder. So I'll do a handful of fights, but nothing major. And then we'll march on through the rest of the dungeon um, and only fight enemies that I haven't seen before or, or seem a little bit more powerful uh, before we go and find our Therion that we need to find in PR, which we think there might be. We don't know. Um, but yeah, so uh, in between videos, I've uh, been keeping up a little bit more with the video game news uh, and uh, yeah, some lots of lots and lots of rubbish happening as per custom, at least from the uh, AAA development area, although, you know, there's been a bit of indie development problems as well, but a lot of that's old news Not now, really. so if there is any indie development rubbish going on or bad stuff going on, I don't know about mm. it, but we'll talk about the AAA stuff because that tends to be the more popular. Um, starting with Bethesda, really. Bethesda... Uh, well, yeah, I, I don't know what's happened to them really. I, I guess they've just given up the ghost of trying to be a decent uh, AAA publisher and developer, making money properly, well not properly, but making money fairly so that they can make a profit, but it's responsible profit, so they give out a good product that people want to buy, support that product for the lifespan of it, to keep people uh, you know, happy with them and uh, keep their reputation up and respect up. Uh, and instead they've decided to go full on maximum profits um, you know, it may very well be that they've decided to do that because of shareholders. I don't know if Bethesda is a public uh, listed company or not. Um, if it is, it makes sense. If it isn't, then they're just being greedy regardless. But the point being is they've decided to maximise profits. And they have decided with their ever so uh, wonderful, in quotation sarcastic marks, Fallout 76, to introduce a $100 a year or $13 a month premium membership for Fallout 76. <laughs> And, um, you know, you might be thinking to yourself, well, what's wrong with that? A lot of games now may have a subscription service, especially if it's an online multiplayer game, which for All Out 76 primarily is. Uh, I mean, $13 a month is quite expensive or something like that, but even so, what's the problem with that? Well, it's the fact that Fallout 76 is just not a very good game, um, at least from what I've been told, what I've seen, what I've witnessed, what I've analysed. Um, I haven't bought it. I did have Fallout 4, or at least I borrowed my brother's copy of it because he bought it. Um, I did have Fallout 4 and I enjoyed Fallout 4, although I have to say in some places it was a step backwards from Fallout 3, but in some places it was a step forward. Um, but overall it was a good game. The only problem with it was I didn't like the speech uh, system in it, so they really overly simplified it, um, which was a bit sad. And uh, Apart from that, it was a little bit more buggier, or at least I was a bit more aware of the bugs, but that might be just because I was woke compared to Fallout 3 and New Vegas, although I have to say, New Vegas is my favourite uh, more recent Fallout game, and that is buggy as hell, yet for some reason I could tolerate that, don't know why. <laughs> but um, anyway, uh, yeah, you've got uh, Fallout 4, which is good, um, but yeah, Fallout 76 is not so good, uh, and the main reason why I didn't bother to play it or buy it is because I don't really play online multiplayer games, I, I just have no interest in it, to me they're all exactly the same, just with different coats of paint, possibly different lore, well, generally different lore and story and characters, but the actual thing of it is the same. And it's just not a very compelling package for me. And you could argue as well with single player games that they're generally the same. You know, look at Stanley Parable outlining basically a lot, if not 90% of the. Uh, well, I, I wouldn't go as far as say 100%, but I would definitely say at least 90% of games all follow the gene sort of a, a general formula, which Stanley Parable just stripped down to his basics. And again, I totally understand that, but I find that particular formula of games more entertaining, such as this one. You know, it's not an actually a revolutionary game this one, it's a, it's a simple sort of 
combination of action RPG, you know, um, you know, uh, and other genres that I can't think of. I have I've just played this type of game before, but I like it because I like the story and the gameplay and the style of game for me is fine. And what it does, it does well. So you know, if people really like online multiplayer, so I'm not turning around saying you shouldn't like it. It's a waste of money. No, if you like it, that's fine. But Fallout 76 never really entertained me in that regard because I just don't play them. Um, but even if it did, it isn't a very good example of one. Um, for the money they're charging for it. Um, so much so that uh, when it came out uh, back in the day, I think it was uh, end of 2018, beginning of 2019, forget when, when it came out, but either way, when it did come out, um, it did well in the first week of sales, because it's a new Fallout game, people are going to buy it, they like Fallout, um, only for the second week of sales to just plummet by up to 70%. So it, it, it And they started discounting it like well within a month of it being released. They started cutting the price down to try and get more people to buy it. And it was a shell of a game. It was broken. It was barely anything in it. Uh, it you just basically bought, essentially, in most people's uh, perceptions, a, a beta. <laughs> you know, not even not even a fully developed game. And you could argue, oh well, it's all part of this live service model, which is fine if you buy into that. I don't buy into the live service model. I don't. I, I just look at it and think you're basically asking me to give you money up front for a half finished game half finished being a sort of general term it may very well be that it hasn't been finished at all oh well, i say finished at all. of course it's been finished otherwise it wouldn't be released to a certain state but it, it isn't um uh, a fully finished game right we're going to do this dangerous encounter then we shall not fight enemies so we will uh, start picking up the face of it um you know i i can't buy games that are live services because you're asking to give money up front to the developers and publishers for a promise that they will add more content, support it for so many years and basically flesh it out to be a full release game. And a lot of the time you've got to pay not only the full price retail, or the full retail price if I put those words in the correct sentence order, um, of the game of, uh, in the UK at least, between, you know, £45, £50, sometimes £60, you know, along those sort of lines, and in America it's generally accepted to be $60. Not only have you got to pay that up front, but you've then got to possibly pay more in terms of this new subscription membership fee that um, Fallout 76 has now announced, and microtransactions, and season passes. Ooh. Nice. I like seeing those rare... Um, uh, Mystic Heart attacks, they're very good. Um, uh, 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 Eidson's is brilliant. Um, I think we might have seen it once before, but I saw it uh, when I was grinding off screen. It's so cool. He like, turns into this proper like yellow eyed, shadowy, devilly angel thing and just goes wail. He wails on the enemy, and I hope we get to see it at some point in the future. Uh, we probably already have, but I can't remember. Um, but if we have, then great. If we haven't, then we will at some point, I hope. But going back on topic, uh, yeah, you know, you've got to pay way more money these days for AAA games at the very least, to access the same amount of content that you would have got, what, 10 years ago, if that? And yeah, okay, you could argue, well, you know, the games are getting more demanding in terms of graphics and engines and physics and maths and, you know, it, it, the, now that a lot of games are having online service to host multiplayer, it's expensive and blah, 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 and it's time consuming and all that. Yeah, I get all that. That all makes sense. If that's adding to the cost of the game, then yeah, perhaps we should pay a little bit more for the product in order for them to keep or maintain their profit margins, providing, of course, that you don't feel ripped off. Um, but the general consensus seems to be that people won't pay up front more money. Some people will, but a lot of people won't. So they, they try and get more money out of you through these incentives like season passes, battle passes, DLCs, microtransactions, subscription services. And this one from Fallout 76 is just ridiculous. It basically... Um, oh, I've got to revive. This is how distracted I'm getting. Uh, it's, it's, see, Fallout 76 is bad. It distracts you from actual games. Um, it's... Um, Yeah, I really need to pay attention to this. Right, okay, let's 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 um, let's not. Um, I just wasted that item there. I should not have done that. Oh dear. It's okay. Don't worry. We'll, we can survive this. We might have to escape from this fight because these fights are quite hard, actually. Christ, come on! There we go. Right, item. Uh, Lappy sec. Revive me, please. Thank you. What I need to do is start wailing on these guys before I can start reviving people. Because if I don't, we're going to get inundated. Because the problem is, is these, these, I don't know what these these things are, but they they are very, very dangerous if you let them be. Um, 
they, they, their magic attacks can get you uh, trapped and basically stunned and pinned. And it's like juggling, basically. They juggle you with these air attacks. And if there's more than one of them doing it at the same time, it can wipe you out. So we've got to kill them. That's it. There we go. Right, now I can use a peach gel. Oh, I didn't buy any apple gels. That's bad. Ah, oh, damn it. I might have to go and buy some apple gels. Yeah. That's fine. We will. We can we can fast travel, so we can cut the time on that. Yeah, we did it. Two thousand experience points. Yeah, like I said, this, ga this game's getting harder now, which is good because um, it probably is that we're coming towards the end game part now, or at least uh, into the actual final act or whatever. But um, yeah, it's getting hard. But anyway, ba basically, my long rambly story of um, Fallout 76 subscription membership is: it's a hundred dollars a year or thirteen dollars a month. You get bugger all for it, um, and um, just don't don't buy it. Just even if you're a Fallout 76 fan, just don't don't spend money on it. Please don't. And if you have to, because you feel it is good value and you do enjoy it, okay, go for it. You know, it's up to you. At the end of the day, I'm not telling you how to spend your money. You spend your money however you want. But ooh, Sarah, the secret history is. Oh, you've already got that. Who cares? Um, it's it's a rip off. It really is. And Bethesda really should be um making the base game of Fallout 76 better. And apparently they are going to do that. Um, oh, quartz garment. Yeah, we'll buy that. Oh, I can buy another one. Lovely. Yes, we need some of those. Um, oh, Bellstar pencil. We'll get that as well. Yay, I get a discount. Lovely. Oh, uh, Helmut Schmidt Schnash. Sash. I, I completely mispronounced that, but the point being is, hooray, we are good at buying and selling things. Um, oh, I can get those. I'm buying these because I've been doing it off screen and I should have been doing it before, but it means then that uh, characters can um, uh, can uh, get items and level up in them a bit quicker. I mean, I suppose it's a waste of money, but to be honest, um, I, I, it's just time saving, which is the problem, really. A game shouldn't be about time saving, it really shouldn't. Um, what's this one do? Oh, right, okay. Uh, yeah, we'll put that on. And then you need a quartz garment. We'll definitely give you that one. Um, you've mastered the quartz ring, but you've mastered all the rings at the moment, so that's fine. And the new boots for you to wear. New, no, that's fine. Um, so yeah, what was I saying? Yeah, no. Um, um, it's just a rip-off. So yeah, just don't buy it because you you get basically bugger all for it. Um, you know, what do you get? You get like a, a new tent that you can put in the game that allows you to basically just, um, I mean, no, it's just crap. Just look it up. Just look it up. Seriously. Just look it up and, and you'll see how crap it is. I mean, it just is. It's a bunch of crap. Um, but, um, yeah, so there's that. Uh, and then what else has been going on uh, recently? Uh, I think we're all good for now. Yeah, we're all good. Right, okay, let's get back to where we were. Um, we're not going to be fighting now, we're just going to get on with the game. But, um, yeah, so there was that controversy going on. Um, and I know I could have finished off all that sentences. But, yeah, basically, obviously, bugger all and artificial solutions for artificial problems that the game created. Don't buy it. Don't pay it. Just leave it. Let it die. And hope the is Elder Scrolls 6, if it ever comes out, is a lot better. Um, what else has been going on? Yeah, Activision Blizzard. Oh, God, yeah. All this Hong Kong stuff going on at the moment. Um, basically, uh, uh, there was a tournament, a Hearthstone tournament or something like that. And some guy who won the tournament uh, did a stream afterwards. Uh, well, he didn't, but he was uh, being interviewed during a stream uh, with Blizzard or Activision Blizzard or whatever uh, about his victory and blah, blah, blah. And then at the end of the stream, he put a mask on and he was like, yes, free China, democracy for all. You know, get rid of China tyranny and that sort of thing. And because it was a political statement and because the tournament, I think, was being held in China or it's got major Chinese backers, um, he got banned for a year and his prize money that he did win fairly from the tournament taken away from him. Uh, but uh, as time progressed, people protested, saying it was awful what they'd done in terms of Activision Blizzard and their punishment being really harsh. Um, they reduced the ban to six months and gave his prize money back. And the guy who said what he said, this uh, a Blitz Chung, I think his name was, um, he has stated, at least at the time of this recording, that um, you know he accepts the consequences of what he did. He knew what he was doing. Uh, he's not trying to say that he says that everybody should be able to do it or was he, he's not trying to put pressure on people to speak up for Hong Kong in terms of what's going on over there. He just did it and accepted the consequences and said that I did break the contract rules of uh, Blizzard, Activision Blizzard, what I signed up for. Um, and, uh, you know, I accept what happened to me, but I think that the six month ban is still really, really harsh. It should be a lot less, but they've still allowed me to play in certain tournaments and, you know, I've got my prize money and all that, but it wasn't really about the prize money, uh, all that really. Um, I just wanted to freely express myself because apparently Activision Blizzard 
or at least Blizzard anyway, supports global voices, global speech, you know, freedom of expression, supporting players' voices, everybody should be listened to. And yet they've gone and contradicted that by their actions here. And a lot of people have been putting that down to basically saying that because Activision Blizzard has a lot of now uh, major financial interests in China, that um, uh, ch basically the Chinese authorities, uh, President Jing. Jinping, or however you pronounce it, or Yi Yingping, I don't know how you pronounce his name, I really don't, I'm not doing that out of disrespect, I just don't know how to pronounce his name. Um, he is obviously clamping down on China in terms of making it, uh, well, basically a totalitarian state, I guess, maybe, uh, with one unified thought, and basically anybody who disagrees with it, you get shut out. And, um, oh, for God's sake, sorry, I'm not actually bumping into these enemies on purpose, they just sometimes it's small now, sorry. We will get on with the story, I promise. Um, because I want to, and I haven't got much time to actually make this video today, I'm under a bit of pressure myself. Um, but, um, yeah, people are saying that the reason why Activision Blizzard reacted in the way that they did to this um, Blitzchung guy uh, for his statements on Hong Kong is simply because of Chinese interests and China put pressure on them to do so, otherwise they'll have to um, lose their Chinese market access or what have you, and therefore their money and profits, uh, which is what basically corporations um, prioritise, because that's what they do, that's what they're meant to do. Um, and... Um, you know, my thoughts on the whole thing is just, you know, uh, don't really believe... Oh, are they all exorcists? Some of them look like merchants. Oh, there's some people in the distance. There's a town past these ruins. It was probably them. No need for us to approach and cause trouble. Oh. Okay, fair enough. Oh, we won't do that then. We won't go this way then. Um, you know, uh... Oh, for God's sake! These feckin' wretches that keep... They're invisible. They just pop out of nowhere. Um... You know, my, my whole take on the situation is because uh, the, the, the the escalation of all this now is that nobody really knows if, um, at least at the time of this recording, if the BlizzCon um, is going to happen or not. Um, I think it still is going to happen, but I think the word is that they're going to cancel the question and answer session so that they won't get attacked by the public for their stance on uh, what they've done to Blitzchung for his Hong Kong um, comments, uh, which is a bit cowardly, but I suppose in a way it's damage control um, from their perspective, not uh, as a reputation or a company's perspective. Um, uh, but it's still very cowardly and not very good for uh, corporation reputation or respect. Sometimes you just have to suck it up and take the battering because then it shows that you can, shows you're resilient and shows that you are humane. But they won't. Uh, and again, I can understand why, but, you know. Uh. Um, so there's that. I think that's going to happen. I don't know if that's been confirmed or not. I just remember reading or hearing about it somewhere. So I take that with a pinch of salt. Um, but nobody knows if BlizzCon really is still going to happen. It probably will. In a sort of slightly limited or modified capacity. Um, but, um... Uh, yeah, there's been protests here. They were going to do an Overwatch event on the Nintendo Switch uh, service, but they cancelled that uh, because of what's been happening. They obviously, they don't want protests and stuff happening. And people are, who are fans of Blizzard and Activision, or Activision Blizzard at the very least, uh, or Blizzard at the very least, um, you know, they've been some people have been rallying together, creating petitions, planning protests, even unsubscribing from Blizzard services, which is quite a, a good way to uh, basically make Blizzard listen is to stop giving them money. I've always said this, my, my ultimate point on, on what's been happening is it's I don't mind people speaking their voices, I haven't got a problem with that. Um, obviously you have to accept consequences of doing that, um, because, well you don't have to accept them but you're going to have to uh, cope or, 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 or a deal, I think is a better word for it, uh, with the consequences of your actions because every action has a consequence. And then if you think it's right or wrong, deal with it that way. Um, but, uh, yeah, corporations are primarily just here to make money. That's all they're here to do. Uh, what the hell is that over there? I don't know, but it's got an exclamation mark. So... Toodles! Toodles! Boil oysters in the cloisters! Oh, got another letter for you, Eisen! Okay. Maybe it's from your sister this time. You want to read it? Me? Uh... Please allow me. <laughs> Your cruelty knows no bounds. <laughs> you bring deep sadness to a fair maiden's heart with each passing day. Repent or else I'll be forced to intervene. This is your final warning. And that's it. Wow, that's it. This person sounds really mad. Yeah. Eisen, what did you go and do to make the fair maiden cry? I don't know, but I could try a couple things on you. Uh -oh. Ooh, excuse me if I forget to be scared. <laughs> the letter mentions a fair maiden. Do you think it refers to your sister? What? Oh, you could be onto something. 
She must be lonely so far away from her brother. It sounded like she's pretty fond of you. Does it? It didn't sound like that to me. Are you suggesting that Aizen's sister wrote these letters? I mean, they're certainly unusual, but... My sister wouldn't write something like this. Then maybe it's someone who's spending a lot of time around her. Like, oh, a man whose shoulder she cries on. Ah, uh, possibly. Damnation, Magilu! My sister doesn't have any guy clinging on to her! Except for you know me! I don't? Prove it! Bring him here right now! Calm down, Aizen. No one's saying that. But if you're really that worried, why don't you go see her? <sighs> have you... not done that since you left? I did go back once, a long time ago. But as soon as I showed up, a crowd started to gather. Overcome by malevolence, they turned into demons and attacked my sister then and there. Do you think it's your fault that happened? What do you think? I'd moved us to a safe place, low in malevolence and high up a rugged mountainside. So much for coincidence. I haven't gone back to see Oh since. yeah, because of his curse. Changing topics. I know I said these Nordals were a little off, but I think I'm starting to see that as part of their appeal. Oh god, she's into pop punk. My point is Oh pop punko, no whatever they're called, I hate those things. Be, any gift could make a girl happy if it's given from the heart. Huh. <laughs> Sorry. You can't have one. Burn! <laughs> that is burn. Crikey. Oh, oh well. Anyway, it's fun. Um, right, well, that might be a side quest thing then. So, um, again, we're going to have to explore that at some later point. Um, if we can. Um, but yeah, no, look, you know. This is... The, the whole problem with this Activision Blizzard thing is just highlighting what I've always said. is It's impossible. Impossible. To be a... Uh, a global thing. Oh, there was a weapon in here that I picked up off screen. Uh, I forget what it was, but it wasn't that important. Um, I think it was for... It was a satchel. It was a satchel for um, uh, uh, Fee. So there you go. Um, but um, anyway, uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah, the, the Activision Blizzard say they're, they're, we, we, we're all about global issues or global uh, perspective. Global voices, people should be heard, blah 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 blah. But you, you just can't be, at least currently not, at this time of recording. I'm not saying it can't happen, but I'm saying it's very unlikely, if not almost impossible. Like, improbable, I think, would be a better term. But you, you just can't... You can't appeal to everyone. You just cannot do that. It is impossible. Not just from a business and corporation perspective. Just from any perspective. You cannot satisfy everyone. You cannot like everyone. You cannot tolerate everyone. Oh, god damn it. Like that. I can't tolerate that. It's fucking stupid. Stupid invisible. Um, but you, you just can't do it. It's just not within our genetic makeup currently. You can try it. Damned hardest. You can. Um... You know, really give it a go, and it will, for most, some people, maybe most people, give them the benefit of the doubt, um, as in the public, um, it may be quite easy. Um, but you cannot ever claim that you are 100%, you know, tolerant, 100% likable, 100% global. You just can't. There are going to be things said, beliefs uh, told or, or held, or uh, actions taken. Uh, plans made, perspectives, arguments put forward that you're going to disagree with. You're just going to disagree with um, because it goes against your core values as a being. Um, and y you can't, you can't demonise that. You cannot demonise that and say that that's wrong or bad. Y you just can't. Um, because that's the, you're basically demonising yourself for being human. You can't do it. You've, you've got to basically understand that as much as the world, or people, young people especially, are trying to believe that the world is global, it, it, it isn't. It's the only way, I promise you, I know I keep saying this, and I know people think I'm being an idiot, but I promise you now, it's the only possible way that the world will ever be truly global, as in the human race will really properly bond together, won't have national identities, won't have country origins or what have you. I mean, you will genetically and all, you know, historically, but I mean, in terms of like, uh, social economics and stuff like that, the only way in time that you will give up all that and consider yourself a global citizen of Earth, a human being of Earth, only and only that 
as if there are aliens. I'm serious. If only if, if there are aliens, and therefore we realise with proof and evidence and what have you, that there is other life out in the universe that is either the same as us, worse than us, better than us, and therefore we're actually part potentially of a massive universe economy, such as say in Mass Effects, where we are in the you know universe of that game, then yeah. You would, because you would unite around a common enemy or a common objective, because it, it, it's not all about us anymore. We, we are we're going to have to bond together, and we would instinctively. It would take time. It wouldn't happen overnight, and there'd still be some racial segregation and all that sort of stuff. But it'd be much more limited and much more thing because the human race would realise, shit, <laughs> there's things out there that could get us. Oh, and we'd have to prioritise that ahead of. Um, ourselves and again like i said it won't all of it won't go away absolutely not but it would definitely be more global more accepting you know people would just represent earth and work as a earth community rather than individual nations and ideas but until that happens until we have a bigger common enemy um even on earth uh potentially um it's just you you can't get full unity you can't get full unity you can't get full global so don't even bother what you should do is believe in what you believe in understand and realize what your core values are and they can change values change people's beliefs change of course they do um but understand what they are and just be happy and content with them until something comes along that nicely or persuades you or in a consenting way whatever you want to call it changes them you know because and it changes them because you suddenly realize something or you go oh, i hadn't thought of that before or oh actually that's a good point and i'm saying that not to appease you i'm saying that because that generally is a good point uh, that's a very clever thing um that's the only time that oh, so we'll get more uh, it's the only time that that that's the only thing you need to worry about but trying to be global to, it's just not possible just so don't just don't support what you want to support um, and if you do want to support the globe, good for you, you know, but um, good for you. But you, you, you are fighting a very, very hard battle for yourself. I just don't see the point. Just support and love and be with the people you want to be with and ignore everybody else. Don't go after them. Don't hurt them. Just ignore them. And um, uh, if they cross you, if anybody does cross you and, and challenges you, then, you know, react with... Uh, whatever response you feel is appropriate and I say that as in oh it doesn't have to be reasonable it doesn't have to be measured like you have to think about it no you just think no it depends on how much this person or people are encroaching your your, your viewpoints um, then respond and and then if anybody attacks you for your response you say well come at me bro you know that's how it goes and you just have to because at least you're being honest and upfront with um with who you are you're defining yourself you're giving yourself an identity and that's the same with corporations corporations cannot be global the only reason why they want to be global or seem to be global is so they can make as much money as possible from everybody they and and and, and the trouble is is that they will but they will shoot themselves in the foot many many times to the point where they could collapse so they can't maintain it because everything changes um so yeah just just um ah that door's open now right we need to go that way um just uh just 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 be smart yo just be smart can you piss off birdie thing i don't want to fight you no i've already fought a load of you grinder don't need to do it anymore um we'll, we'll do a quick save actually while we're here Lovely. um yeah just don't just don't go for it and for blitz chung you know he's been a real uh, noble man about this he's not starting a campaign or anything he's been very very good and i agree with him the ban was far too long you know but he's been very respectful very noble uh, all power to him to be fair to him as a, as a human being he's, he's a good he's, he appears to be a good chap who's only fighting for what he or only speaking out his mind what he believes is right acting, she's calm it looks like letting her in on the truth worked as well as we thought it might good maybe she'll be easier to control now it's a good job that they had that conversation that we could coincidentally oversee and over here because they don't care about security halt who are you Oh, this is like a full-on battle, boss battle. Nah, it's just a normal enemy encounter. Oh no, my controller's died! No! No controller, no! Don't die on me now! There we go, we're back! Oh god! Ow! Look at the damage, man! It's getting bad, bro, it's getting bad. Especially when your controller dies. That's never so good. Oh my god, they wiped us out! 
Have I got to grind more? I might have to grind more. Holy shit. Well, either that or I just pay attention to... Uh, oh! Yeah! Days! The days! The days! Alright, I need to... I need to really focus on reviving my members. Okay, yeah, now the game is starting to go up a notch now. Oh, God's sake! Come on, revive! Oh, my God. It's a good job I did that quick save earlier on, because these guys are tough! Right, life bottle. Revive! Oh god, I'm dead again. Right, I might have to use an all divide then. I'm gonna have to use an all divide because I can't maintain this. Right, we we'll use a life bottle. We're gonna have to use an all divide and half the battle damage for everybody because it's just gonna make it a lot. I, I don't like to use it, but yeah, we're getting our asses handed to us, and we need to um, we need to control this battle a bit easier. There we go. So now everybody's taking half damage, it'll just be easier to, to try and heal everybody. Yeah, it'll make the battle longer, but to be honest with you... Fuck it out. No, I just gotta heal. So, uh, Elsa's back. Actually, yeah, I should be bringing Elsa back, really, so let's do it. Can I bring Elsa back? I don't think I can. Oh no, I've got Elsa back. No, wait, what? No, I'm trying to change... No, it doesn't matter, whatever. Yeah, I need... How do I... Ah, here we are. Why can't I switch to... I need to switch. Why can't I switch? I don't understand why I can't... Ow! I hate these juggling moves! They suck! This is bad. It's a good job I stuck to one enemy's uh, items beforehand. We're just not doing any damage to the... Well, we've halved everything now, but... but... That's fine. I don't mind halving damage as long as I can control the battle. That's the problem. But we need to take care of these guys. But the trouble is, I think these uh, they can spawn new enemies, can't they? Oh, that's good. That's a lot of damage. That's good damage. All right, we're starting to get some control back into the battle now. Um, peach gel. Right, I need to get... I'll keep Elsa out for now. I need to get Rocker out. Oh, why can't I switch that? Right, can I switch those two? Oh, because they got stasis ailments. Ah, that, oh no, no, because she... Oh, I don't know. Right, let's get... Um, we need... Um, we need... Uh, uh, Fee on here, because I know he can heal from time to time. I know I could be changing up their battle art combinations and stuff. I, I just cannot be bothered. So I know a lot of this difficulty of this fight is definitely self-made. But hey, it's a challenge. Why not? It's a challenge. And I like a challenge. From time to time. No, oh, for God's sake! The stupid juggly juggly! Stop doing the juggle juggle! I don't like the juggle juggle! It's stupid! I hate it! I mean, it's clever. It's 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 a fair move. I'm not saying that um, they can't do the juggle juggle, but it's annoying! But what we need to do is take out these, these troopers, because if we don't, we're going to be in a whole world of trouble. Because they can keep summoning enemies. That's it, I can stun them as well. Keep stunning. Just keep keep attacking. Yeah, that all divide item is so useful, but I don't want to keep using it because obviously it just makes it too easy. But yeah, if I hadn't have used it, I would have got my asses handed to me. But hey, strategizing, hey? Strategizing! Making use of what we have. Ow! I got bitch slapped for saying that. A, f a double bitch slap! Stop! Do I, I think we both bitch slapped each other at the same time there. That was, that was uh, quite impressive. That's because I've only got one thing. Come on! Yes! Dead! Yeah, we got it. We got it. We're back in control. Yeah! God, that was hard. Again, if we didn't have all divide, that would have that would have been massively problematic. Right. Okay. Uh, expedition time. We haven't done this for ages. But we got a new treasure. Model. Craymail Cage. A mysterious model crafted on the Quickie Peninsula, said to have the power to unite two different energies. Alright, keep doing that then. Look at the treasures then. So what have we got now? Where is it? There it is. This is a relic from another civilization. I'm sure of it. Well, you're very happy. 
What's this about uniting two different energies? Does that mean this object could bring harmony between humans and Malachi? It's possible, but without knowing how to operate this thing, we can never be sure. In any case, these were originally used to enable people of two opposing worlds to wield magic. What? That sounds like Exodus used Malachi, so these were weapons then. Some say they were used, also used to unite Mabu Tofu and Curry to create Babu Curry. You mean we owe Mabu Curry to this thing? Heh, <laughs> there's no need to get worked up, Eleanor. It's only natural, when you think about it. Whenever there are two opposing sides, both the sense of amnesty and desire for harmony are perfectly normal. That's just what I was saying earlier. The game knows me now. Thank you, game. Choose what matters. There you go. Eleanor said it herself. What matters is the path you choose. There you go. Sums everything up in a nutshell. Do that, people, and you'll be happy. And just don't worry about anything else. Got so plenty enough to worry about as it is. is here. But what's this about the truth and controlling her? Don't know. Sounds shady. Um, we'll deal with that later. Right, don't want to f I, again, I'm not going to grind because I've, I've grinded enough. I, I could grind some more, but I'm not, not in this video. Not today. Um, that'll be bad. Well, actually, before I carry on, I'm just going to quickly check everything's recording, okay? And then we shall continue. So, crossfade transition. Woo! Okay, I think everything's going all right. So, we shall move on. But anyway, yeah, so, uh, yeah, they said it all themselves, so that's all good. Right, anyway, let's just crack on then. We've got stuff to do, so I've not much time. I'm running out. Another force ring! Don't need that. Don't need it. We're all good. Just collecting these catty souls. Which you can see has gone up quite, uh, not by a huge amount, but it has gone up by about 600, I think, roughly. Uh, right, no, 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 no. Dangerous enemies. Like I said, I would fight the dangerous enemies, but we're running out on health items as well. I don't particularly want to escape from here to go get health items. We're just going to have to quick save it before we do the... Uh, well, I'm sure there'll be an inevitable um, battle with this Melissa or whatever, but um, uh, if, if we'll do a quick save for Ryan, so if it means I have to go get more items, then I will, and I'll cross fade to it. Uh, so you'd have to see me escape and go back through all this, because that would be a waste of your time. So I do have some control over editing. Time permitting. Right, anyway, yeah, go away guys, don't care, don't care, it's all nice to see you, blah 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 blah, thought you were load already, let's just move on. Right. I do need to upgrade my weapons as well, so I think at the end of this video, before the next one, uh, if I can, I shall um, take my existing inventory of items and I will try and upgrade them to make them a bit stronger, because that might be helpful. Nice. I see, I was just collecting these for the sake of collecting them, but we do have to do this anyway because we need to find these hidden things. Yay! Found them. Good times. Oh, there's even a save point there for us just in case. Oh, thanks game. You're so kind. So yeah, obviously this is uh, going to be big boss time now, so hopefully hopefully it'll be alright. Okay, again, just going to pause it for a moment because sometimes when I save the game it doesn't it interferes with the recording. Crossfade once more, and we shall then go on and have a look at this Melissa, Medissa, whatever her name is, and see if we can beat her, if we have to. Or reason with her. Maybe we can have a pint. Who knows? Back in a sec. Okay, let's do it. Boop -boop. Ooh, a herb. Need that. Red verbena. Why have they gone from red to green? That's what I want to know. Because I know they were red her uh, green herbs, but now they're all red herbs. I don't know why that is. I don't know. Well, I don't really care. Who cares? Five bottle. Need that. 16 Tails coins. Don't really need it, but I've got a four of them anyway. Right, story time is over there. There's also more to go down this tunnel, uh, this dungeon as well, potentially, or maybe that's the exit to the next bit. Who knows? Either way, that's not our priority. Our priority is this bit of R. Which has a very basic, arbitrary sort of locking mechanism. Oh, no, actually, maybe not. Oh, actually, before we do go into story, we can... We can go on. Ooh, actually, perhaps we will. We will go this way. Uh -huh, yeah, yeah, uh, lied. We're not going to do a story yet. We're going to go this way. Probably can't. Probably won't be allowed. Oh, no, we can. Ooh. Well, it, I'd be a fool not to explore outside the box. It may be that we can't go that much further with the box, but you never know. You never know. Because there's a there's a squarey thing there. There's um, a geo square thing or whatever it's called, which we can grab, which means we can glide through here, which would be great. Yes. No, I don't want to do that. I want to glide. How do I use blood? Board. Yes. Board of magic. What have we got here? Mellow fluid. Runners high. 
Women's shoes. Guaranteed never to scuff, even after a 40k marathon. Fair enough. That sounds good, right? You can have those in my dear. Uh, run as high. There we go. Pretty good, actually. Ooh, art defense when HP is low. I like it. That sounds good. Good, 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 good. Right. So I'm get. Oh, I wonder where this leads then. Oh, I'm intrigued. I must know. I must know the secret. Ooh. Oh. So we could have gone this way anyway, but we we, 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 we we could have gone this way, but it was blocked. Maybe it was blocked last time. Perhaps we did go in here and it was blocked. I don't know. No, I don't think we ever did. But we could have done, and it would have taken us um, here. And then we wouldn't have been able to have gone on, because the door would be closed? No. I don't know. I, I don't think we could have come here and bypassed all of that. I think um, there was definitely some sort of... Um, blockage. I don't know. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Point being is, now we know we can go back on ourselves. Right. There's a person on their own. It's obviously going to get nasty. Let's do this. I say it's going to get nasty. Of course it is. Of course. A barrier. She's a barrier. We know that! Third time's the charm, eh, kid? Yeah. Delicious. Hello, you come to claim your Medissa. <laughs> your Medissa. Well, who, wh why would I she am? not be? And who might you be? I'm here to eat your soul and your flesh. We're like you. We carry grudges against the Abbey and Shepherd Artorius. Except she doesn't. It's gonna be okay. We came to get you out of here, Medissa. Nah, she's gonna. We're gonna have to kill this one. She's like, I love. There's no escape. Oh, she's gonna be depressed what? instead. Please don't give up. I can no, you don't understand. There's no escape for you. Yeah. If you dare sully Shepherd Artorius's ideals and the light the Abbey shines upon the world, I will kill you all. Ooh, snakies. Yeah, I thought so. I thought this was gonna happen. Yeah, she was exposed to the truth. It was um Artorius's penis. She got to taste its lovely milk, and then she was converted. Why did I? Why did I go to that conclusion? I must have late for him sexual tendencies. It, it, it just has to be the case. Anyway, whatever. Sorry about that. That was a very disgusting um, thing. Now, I do apologise. This lady was not shown Arturo's as penis as a lovely milk. It was instead told it. She's not an it. It's a she. What she might be in it. I don't know. Point being is, just, this lady has been told something and she believes it and that's fine your left hand <laughs> don't tell me you're the calamity well probably why are you doing this medissa why fight for the abbey after they forced you to become a therian they didn't i became one of my own free will yeah but this is a bit contrived but i i don't mind so much slain an exorcist's hands you must hate the Abbey for that, don't you? Oh, I feel hate. Toward a world where demons spawn from the people's malevolence. You know about malevolence? No, she was told the truth. The exorcist told me the Yeah, truth. there we go. Diana turned into a demon because of the malevolence she radiated. I knew what I had to do. Become a Therian. Well, there you go then. So she, she. To be fair to her on that one, that's a fair enough point to do it. So yeah. It matters not what dreadful form my body may take. Ooh. Ooh. And change this wretched world. That's fair enough. Though to be fair, she's basically. Si yeah, Medusa. I thought so. Anyway, it looks that's pretty cool. But generic. Fine. We'll take you by force. Absolutely. And by that, I mean we're probably gonna have to grind and we're gonna get our ass sanded to us. But whatever. Yeah, true, but she's made her points in her stance, and to be fair to her, I understand completely and sympathise. So we have to kill her because, um, you know, plans and all. But, um, yes, that's one down. Good times. Um, but yeah, no, uh, yeah, no, that's fair enough. Like I said, I, I, when I said it was this, that bit was contrived, like, I knew that we weren't going to be... And I didn't know because I looked at the story, I haven't looked at the story, I could just tell from the way the story was going 
that you know um, some Therians are not going to want to join us they're going to be like no we're devoted to the Abbey or because of a personal cause such as this woman's that that's the reason why I became a Therian because I want to not repeat what happened to my daughter and that makes perfect sense you know that really is fine you know I totally understand that so it's contrived but it's a good contrived if that makes sense it's not lazy writing it's it's well, it kind of is lazy writing, but it's not bad lazy writing, you know? It's kind of like, you, it fits the story, it fits the context of the game's lore and world. So it's 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 just basic writing, rather than lazy. Rather than lazy, it's basic, but it's fine. It's not really lazy. It, it is lazy to a degree, but not in a bad way, if that makes sense. It's just like, yeah, well, we'll do that, because it, it, it it's not like as if they just went, I love the Abbey, and I'm going to kill you because I am just a one-dimensional character. She's not a one-dimensional character. She has some three-dimensional, you know, attributes to her, which is that she lost her daughter. She knows why she lost her daughter. And um, it's interesting how the... Um, the Abbey has told her the truth rather than trying to manipulate her. So they're becoming a bit more, you know, uh, be direct, shall we say, in their approach now. So that's kind of cool as well. So that adds a bit more three dimensional to it. And it kind of makes sense because you kind of would, but when things are getting tough, you would become a bit more direct in your things. So uh, in your agenda, so to speak, if your current manipulation agenda is not working. So I like that. It's good. Yes, it's all good. It's all good. It all makes logical sense. Oh, I've been stoned. I've been stoned! Godzilla! I've been stoned, I've been stoned, I've been stoned. Can I be unstoned? How do I unstone? I need a panacea bottle, don't I? Actually, no, 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 we'll do, we'll revive Aizen first, more important. And then I got killed, which is fair enough, because I guess petrification would do that. Oh god, I think he's been killed as well. Bollocks! Uh, right. Uh, revive me, please. I need more capacity here. Oh dear god. Right. Oh shit, this is bad. I need to get... Right, avoid the stone. Avoid the stone, avoid the gorgon's eye that makes the stone. Yeah, just avoid stones. Anything to do with stones, bad idea. Right, let's just go for it. Kill, 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 kill. Stun to kill, kill, kill. Come on. Yeah, she's gone. She's been stunned. She's got to take care of that. Yay, got it. Okay, that wasn't too bad. That wasn't too bad. Did get a bit hairy towards the end, but that was alright. That wasn't too bad. It's over. Curse you, Lord of Calamity. I know, she's hot for a Lord of Calamity. Lord of Calamity. Oh, come on, she referred to that earlier and you didn't respond the name to it. Of the Demon Lord, who will bring about the Age of Chaos. The unrepentant embodiment of malevolence, whose blind pursuit of self-gratification will rain destruction upon the world. The irredeemable, uncontrollable personification of human sins. An evil like you. Now that's a bit extreme, that is. Demon, Therian, Lord of Calamity. Call me whatever. <laughs> yeah, I love that. I just don't give a shit. <laughs> but if I'm the supposed Lord of Demons, then you're just a minion to be used as I Nothing more. Oh, girl, you are so no, hot. I refuse. Oh, you what are so hot. My Diana was my fault. I wish you were my girlfriend. That's why I will fight you until my dying breath. Stop! Don't get in my way. No, enough mothers have died. I won't let you join them. Go, Fee. Eleanor and Kamawana, they both lost their mothers too. It's a terrible thing. Kamawana? A little girl that the Abbey forcefully made into a Therian. Her mother tried to save her. She's <laughs> just sitting right going, fuck's sake, soppy stuff time. Her life to fill her child's empty stomach. <sighs> Kamawana's been crying ever since. She misses her mother. You could be her new mother. If you die here... I can only imagine how sad that would make your Diana. Oh, Fee, you psychological manipulator, you. Damn, Fee, you are. Me anymore, Mom. I get it. You love this new dad more than your own daughter. Ooh. No, honey, I did it for you. She probably did, to be fair. She probably had good but intentions. You really thought I stopped loving you, and the malevolence made you into a demon. Oh, damn, that's some deep shit. It's all my fault. I'm so sorry. Oh, wait. 
good intentions can be can be can be misinterpreted. She'll be all right. She's just unconscious. See, now this isn't lazy writing. This is good writing. Let's grab her and haul her back. <laughs> I'm gonna. She's gonna be my dungeon bitch. Just in case. Gotta hand it to the Abbey. Very resourceful. Taking advantage of Medissa's regrets like that. Uh, yeah. Making her into a Therian who would do their bidding. Yeah, it wasn't really taking advantage. It was being truthful. But she suppressed the actual truth. So cool. I don't know if they did. Who cares? Reason above all, no. It's true. The way I feel goes against all reason. Well, thinking, feelings, no actions, they're all linked. Halibis. Once we take Medissa out of here. Oh, let it die. It's a fucking useless place anyway. And yet I'm doing exactly that. All on account of my own hang-ups. Yeah, join the club! Even crushing Medissa's honest resolve. Good! It's because you are Velvet's bitch. According to reason, malevolence is the fault of the individual. You assume no responsibility or guilt for what happens to them. Ooh. I refuse to turn a blind eye to the consequences of my actions. I chose this path to seek the truth, not to deny it. If I'm to betray reason, then that is the very least I should do. You're too much, you know that? <laughs> <laughs> Quit overthinking things. Yes. Just blame all the suffering on the Lord of Calamity. Makes life easier. Oh, I love Velvet. She's Velvet. so amazing. She's so cool. I've got to get Not a figure of her. Cheer you up. I've got to get a figure of her. Like I'm a, just saying, a it doesn't bother me. Her. Whatever's coming, I can handle it. Of course you can. It'll be tough, but you can, because you're Velvet the Awesome Bitch. The Therion, the Lord of Calamity. God, she's so cool. I, I really love her to bits. And not in an, um, uh, you know, not in a, um, objectifiable way either. Yes, I've refer referenced her looks and all that sort of stuff. Um, and sort of sexualised a lot of things she said. But, honest to God, not just that. Her, her as a person is just so awesome. She's just such an amazing person. Go through what she's doing and the way she handles things, the way she sees things, perceives things. It's very similar. Not exactly the same, but very similar to how I see things. And I love it to bits. I really do. It's so nice to see a fictional character that understands me. <laughs> Why are you fictional? <laughs> oh dear. That's how sad my life is. But hey, whatever. We'll roll with it. I can cope with it. I can deal with it. Like uh, good old Velvet says herself. We can deal with it. Uh oh. So, just gotta quickly check my phone. Oh, it's just a morning thing. That's okay. It was something from work. That was all. I've uh, I've got a um, uh, an, uh, I've got a, a thing that I have that allows me to communicate with them, and uh, you know I, I have to keep an eye on it. That's all. But I don't have to keep an eye on it. I completely ignore it, but I do because I like to come across as a good person. Right. So I take it then we just gotta leave here, which I suppose we could just um, uh, just yeah, just do that. Just quick quick warp ourselves out of here just to save a bit of time but yeah no I like again see what I said was contrived reasoning the game was like oh you think our writing's contrived there do you Neo well how about this powerful emotional thing and I'll be like well that's also not original but it was hey, very well done so yeah touche game do you think I hurt Medissa oh. saying that stuff to her back there you manipulated her that's I what you did suppose you might have. but it's fine but I was thinking the exact same things you were Losing a mother. It's always a tragedy. It is. I'm glad you stepped in and stopped her. Yeah, good man, Fee. Thanks. See. <sighs> that Eleanor. I swear, she feels way more responsibility for everything than she needs to. I must break You think we her. need to worry? What if she pushes too far and erupts with malevolence? Malevolence is born out of many things. A prideful ego. The self-righteousness that turns a blind eye to one's inner contradictions. Eleanor is different. She's mindful of her ego and strives to confront her inconsistencies of character. Yeah, she's just she basically a, a, a strong person. Won't be tainted by the emotions that create malevolence. No other quality is as essential for an exorcist. Hmm. So she's probably okay <laughs> for now, at least. But human hearts can be fickle things. Yes, very Who true. Who knows what the future holds? Very true. Eh, I doubt you got anything to worry about. For most exorcists, purity is a construct of the Abbey's teachings. But Eleanor, 
She's the real deal. <laughs> She's not your average exorcist, I'll give you that. Purity is handy for any exorcist. But more than that, it's a rare and precious temperament for living. Everybody's got an ego and certain internal contradictions to some degree. See, this game knows me. It knows me and my philosophy. And that's the, one of the reasons to why I love it so much. human is to live carrying malevolence. It's just how much you let it control you that varies. Very true. I guess malevolence Not 100% true, true but that's a part life. of it, yeah. Uh, but Artorius can't accept that. No. But yeah, again, I'm not saying that what this game's saying is 100% true in terms of how to live, how to be human and all that. But it certainly does, at least in my opinion anyway, and the way I believe things, it certainly does... Um, uh, it certainly does outline what it is to be human, but it doesn't try to demonise it. Like, it has... I know it, it does, because obviously Malevolence turns people into demons and all that, so, okay, that was a bit of a contradictory statement, and that's part of my internal contradictions. But what I mean to say is, is that what's happening in the game, where the demonisation of people because of the, their malevolence consuming them, is, in a way, just... Think of it as like the surface of it all. Think of it as like when people uh, in re reality jump on a story or jump on something because somebody said something that might be offensive or somebody's done something that might be a bit weird or somebody's... You know what I mean? And everybody jumps on it and they go, Ah! Demon! Racist! Uh, misogynist! And blah blah and, they, and that's what this idea of people uh, in this game, in this universe, who, who, who get Malevolent Stones Demons, that's the surface of it. That's what everybody sees it as and everybody jumps to it as and that's all they want to see at first. That's all they that's all they can see because they're panicking. They, they don't want to think about the deeper meaning behind it because to them it's a threat. And because it's a threat, your instinct, your instinctive reactions and, and your instinct is, is to be defensive and, and stay away from it and, and, and try and fight it, you know. But... Then, when it goes into the deeper meaning behind, well, why is it these people are turning into demons? What is malevolence? What, what is? It, why is it that it exists? Why is it that people have this malevolence? Is it really an evil that we're on the surface outlining it to be, or is it actually a proper construct of what it means to be human, or what it means to be alive, what it means to be a being? Um, and therefore, is it really demonic? Is it really demons? Or is it, is it just a label we're putting on? Is all of this people turning into demons merely nothing but a label system? When in actual fact, it's actually a real core structure of who we are. And rather than trying to label it, fight it, burn it and all that stuff and run away from it, we should be em not so much embracing it and hugging it and going, yes, consume me, I am demon, but we should be understanding it and we should be incorporating it. We should be bringing it into us and then sort of thinking, right, well, what am I, oh, do I have to turn into a demon? Do I have to be a racist and misogynist? All that sort of stuff. All is it really because actually I think the real point that people are trying to make or the real thing that's going on here is this we should be understanding of that and therefore how can we move on from that and I think that may very well be the only way maybe a global world as we I was talking about before can be can be accomplished full tolerance full inclusiveness full diversity full all that stuff no racism no bullying no whatever maybe that is the way to do it but at this moment in time human beings at least currently for us can't because we're doing this demon thing which is what this this game is outlined so actually this game is a really bloody good social commentary for modern times and for human humanity basically on the whole as well in terms of a human construct this is a really clever game for being a real psychoanalysis on how human and societies work like i said it's not 100 percent correct nothing ever is there are definitely things in this game and things in my arguments for humanity that can definitely be pointed out and argued against I don't know what they are because I haven't had them pointed against, but I'm open to the possibility that they are that there are holes in all of this in terms of the logic and the thinking, and that's fine. I want to hear them and then talk about them. But yeah, that's why I have to say, when this game, it's not the best game in the world, absolutely not. But it's not a bad game either. It's just a game, but it's it's a fun game. But what's really good about it is its story, its characters, and its its take on the story, it's take on what it's trying to accomplish as a commentary. It's really, really good, but it's not in your face. It's it's not. It's not one that's trying to bash the hammer on you. I mean, there is a bit of hammer bashing, admittedly. There is a bit of head bashing, but overall, it does it in a way where you, you sort of go on with it 
uh, you sort of agree with it. It does it gently. It does tap your head and bash your head in a bit, but it does it gently. That's not a good thing necessarily, but it, it's still interesting. But anyway, I've offered too much. I've got to go because I've got to, uh, I've got to go to work. Um, so I'm going to save the game. We're going to end the video here. Next time, we shall have a look around Hellivers, see if anything bad's happened. And then if not, we're just going to go off and do whatever we need to do. Also, check for side quests that may or may not be opened. And we need to go do that, like Eitzen's letter and whoever this person is and finding the things for the elixir and other bits and bobs. So we will do all that next time. So can I say thank you very much for watching if you have done. Thank you very much for listening to me ramble about crap. Um, thoughts, feelings, comments, leave them below. If not, just wait for the next video or ignore it entirely because you haven't watched it at all and therefore um, it's cool. Just enjoy yourselves. Hope you're all well. So thank you again. Take it easy. Have a good one. All the best and I'll see you in the next video potentially and if not, have a good one and if so, have a good one. Bye for now.